Check this book out. This is from 1960. There's some dated information in here, but as a whole, it's pretty cool. Let's take a look inside. Here is the book in all of its magnificent glory. Uh, on the second page, we have the copyright. 1964 and 1956. Table of contents here. This is what we're gonna be going through. Get an idea of what's in this book but there's some good information and good photography in here, that's for sure. Oh, check this out. This is one of my favorite photos right here. I just really like the framing with the archway here and the contrast from the light and the dark of the people. It, it just really sets the scene and tells you what's going on here. So this was something that I kind of disagreed with. Like, it says, have the sun behind you. Put your subject directly in front of the sun. You got some rules here. Oh, this is important. First rule, number one, be sure your camera is loaded. Nowadays, we would say, make sure you got a memory card. I really enjoy this one right here. Just really, real good sense of power and unity from this. Um, and I like the boots here too. This, can you guess what that is without reading it? It's actually star photos. This is an astrophotography, specifically a 94 minute exposure. You see that 94 minutes? Just not a lot of people know this. Let's say you're photographing this woman, right? It gets flipped inside your eye. So they're upside down inside your eyeball and then your brain actually flips the image. The so same thing happens with film. Here's the basic functions of a camera, specifically a box camera. That is a leaf shutter. Shutter inside the lens. So you get your lens, your aperture, and then your shutter. Oh, I had a coworker who kind of explained this to me. Um, something to do with like F2, for example. F2, if you take the diameter of the aperture, or two of those diameters would fit in between, I think, the lens diameter. Something like that. Look at this. You got, you got this nice triangular shape leading into the action. So the point is right here where the action is going. He's, we got some nice muscle tone here from the sunlight and just this fluid action. It's really tight motion right here. This is neat. Sure, it's blurry. There's no great detail here, but at face value, this is great. I love this. It really shows what's happening. I don't shoot film. I'm not a huge fan of it. More film stuff. Again, not really a film guy. And you know, the more I look at this photo, the more I think it's been edited afterwards, because that elephant is like a tone of blue. I haven't seen an elephant before. And the one behind it is like purple. So I think this has been edited. Oh, look at this. This looks familiar. Isn't this a wallpaper on Mac computers? That's totally that one cliffside on a Mac. <laughs> like looking at the pictures, to be honest. <laughs> Look at that baby. <laughs> That's a good baby shot. <laughs> but I don't photograph babies, so yeah. Look like he's having a lot of fun. <sighs> Maybe that's the purpose of the photo. <laughs> I do this technique a lot. I have a lot of things in the foreground like that. I love this. Holy cow. Beautiful. Mistakes to avoid. Make sure you focus your lens. Make sure your lens isn't dirty. Make sure you don't move to cause blurriness. Stop the motion in some circumstances for your subject. Level your horizon. Oh my god, I see, I see this often. This Dutch angle. Gross. Don't, this is literally called, don't scalp your subject. Subject scalped, you scalped her. You took her hair and her head off. So this is kind of advanced. I looked at this a little bit. It's starting to get into like studio lighting situations. And here's some like high speed photography. Look, there's like a drop of milk or water or something. And that is a compressed tennis ball on a tennis racket. Oh, these are old cameras. Look, I have this camera. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go grab it. See, here it is. My Yashica Man, 124. They call it a contacts with a telephoto lens. This weird protrusion here is the viewfinder, I assume. Look at this, there's a whole section. Good pictures with any camera. It's like I always say, doesn't matter what camera you have, matters how you use it. Look at that, these are just great. You can probably just take these with your phone nowadays. All right, this next section, I'm probably gonna blast through kind of swiftly because it's like developing film. I'll go through it, but I'm not interested in this. A lot of people are. I just don't enjoy film photography. I find it cumbersome. 
a little boring, expensive, that's for sure. And if I want my photo to look like film, I'll just edit it that way. Don't crucify me. For an amateur's book, this goes really in depth. I've talked to some aerial photographers. They were crazy. Like the things that they did, they weren't crazy people, but here's some of the pages that are coming out. Look, trickery photography. He's shooting a giant apple. This one is, what, he's in a jar? These are the photo credits. Every person whose photo is in this book, they give him credits. That's good. Credit, give credit where credit is due. And look, there's photography books to read if you want to read books from the 60s. I hope you enjoyed this blast from the past. It was pretty neat to go through this. A lot of information that's still relevant today. What was your favorite part, if you had one? What's something that you want to know that wasn't in here? Anything? Let me know. Hope you enjoyed the video. You have a great day.